The only thing I was used to was the sausages on the barbecue, and then he gave me beef ribs. Today we're gonna make classic barbecue beef ribs, as they should be. Barbecue is kind of a traditional thing where you make things as they should have been made, as we did it in the past, but we're not gonna do it the way people did it in the past. Things evolve, our barbecues evolve, our method evolves, but we still want that good authentic flavor. Look at this beautiful Black Angus beef rib. Whoa. Three big bones, a lot of intramuscular fat, and a lot of meat on top of the bones because yeah, we're men, we're hungry men. We need a good chunk of meat. We worked hard all day, we deserve it. The classic beef rib. And this is the main thing. If you got this right, you're, well, you just have to cook it, that's all. Get the right quality of meat, that's always the first step. It looks so good. <laughs> we're gonna be eating well tonight, Martha. <laughs> I've never seen Martha. Have you ever seen Martha? I think she doesn't exist. You don't think she exists? <sighs> Conspiracy theory. This piece of meat doesn't need much. We've got a little bit of fat at the bottom, a little bit of silver skin. We're gonna leave all of that on. We want it rough and tough. You can take the silver skin off, but there's a big chance the bones will fall out too. So we're just gonna leave that on as well as the fat cap. Don't worry about it. The crust is gonna be on the outside and the crust that we're building up is gonna be more than enough to get flavor on these beef ribs. And a big chunk like this is going to need a lot of salt and an olive flavor. A little bit of fresh ground black pepper. And when I say a little bit, I don't really mean a little bit. I just mean put on as much as you want and don't worry about it. Don't think, oh, I'm gonna have too much ground black pepper. No, you can never have too much ground black pepper. The next part is optional, a little bit of onion powder. You don't have to put this on. It's just, if you have that as a preference, you can put it on. It just, it's just gonna boost the flavors of the beef rib. You don't want too much of it. Just like a little sprinkle of garlic. And look at that. Oh, it is built up with flavor. Now this thing is ready. And the smell that comes off this, the black pepper, the garlic and the onion. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Let's fire up our Napoleon smoker. We created a small fire with charcoal and some embers from the fireplace. Of course, you can also use a fire starter to start this up. And I got a nice chunk of beech tree with it's already starting to smoke. Now the whole idea behind this is that we have a small fire with a small amount of fuel. With a barbecue like this and not putting in a water pan, we're going to get dry smoke. And that's what I love for bark. But we have to be careful though, we don't put too much fuel in, otherwise your barbecue gets too hot. Now I'm gonna put the stacks on. And basically we created this giant chimney with hot air and smoke. We'll put the beef ribs on and we're going to let the dry smoke catch up on the beef ribs and build up that giant beautiful bark. Because the bark whole thing, it's like super, super crucial. So let's put the lid on and let this smoke at a temperature of around 120 to 140 degrees Celsius. Now it's time to start making a spray, which consists of two tablespoons of paprika powder, one tablespoon of curry powder, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of onion powder, two tablespoons of ground black pepper, two tablespoons of raw cane sugar, and one tablespoon of salt. Yes, we're using the coffee maker again. This is the new technology that we're adding to our barbecue set of skills. Classic barbecue beef ribs, 
with new equipment and new techniques, making your beef ribs even better than they used to be. Now that we got our barbecue rub extraction, we pour it into our spray bottle. Another piece of tech that we never had before, but does so much for our beef ribs. If you have a thermometer that actually reads a graph, then it's kind of cool because you can see that temperatures are going up. We had a major stall here in the middle. Temperature dropped a little bit because charcoal was running out. Then I added charcoal at this point, temperatures went back up again and now temperatures are rising in the meat. So we're at 82 degrees Celsius core temperature. Now look at how good it looks. This thing is absolutely amazing. It looks so good. It looks good, right? So what I want to do is just continuously spray it, making sure that the outside is nice and moist. And at the same time, while spraying it, I don't disturb the crust that we're building up. Actually, I'm making it bigger and bigger. Quickly put the lid back on. We have a hot barbecue, warm meat. And of course, we need hot fluids to make sure that we don't cool down the meat too much. Now we just have to wait and show patience until it finally hits a temperature of 94 degrees core temperature. According to my thermometer, it says three hours and 35 minutes. So yeah, I got some great ideas for the vlog. We can do that in the meantime while we wait for the meat to cook motion. Hey, if you haven't checked out our vlogs yet, you know what to do. Go do the link down below or just check out the channels. Go, go, go. And then come back to this video, of course. And that's how we do beef ribs. No messing around, no dry stuff, no faking it, just real authentic beef ribs. Good quality beef. Did you ever have like an experience where your beef ribs were dry? The quality of the beef ribs determine if they are juicy or not. Then the technique comes in to not screw that up. And when you got those two right, they're gonna be juicy. But what we did was add more flavor to it with that spray. Of course, we got the basic rub, but that spray, that's going to get it to the next level. That's your signature. Together with the smoke from our favorite smoke barbecue, look, look what we made. Look, and it, like it's fall of the bone already. This one fell off, but they're so crazy juicy. It's like, I don't want to squeeze them, but I don't have to really. It's like, it just drips. Look at it. It's just madness. <laughs> and it keeps on going. Insane. Let, let me see the smoke ring. That right there. Oh man. Why are you on this, that side of the camera? Look. Oh man. Oh man. <laughs> Let's start eating. Oh man. How long did we cook it for? Not long. This was a quickie. Seven hours, Morrison. Whoa! Think about, Morrison, think about all the people that are watching this right now with a cup of coffee in the morning. Think about all the cameramen behind the cameras. Mm. Feels like the first time you gave me beef ribs. The only thing I was used to was the sausages on the barbecue. And then he gave me beef ribs. You don't have to buy like a big, big piece, but you, you, you gotta get the right piece. Like invest a little bit more money in quality. You know, maybe a smaller piece, but pay more for good quality. I think that's, that's the key here. You made me love beef ribs all over again. I, I fell in love again with beef ribs. It's ridiculous. I want to chew the bone too. This is the dogs? No, come on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know what the crazy part is? Hmm? Like, I think literally five minutes ago, there was a whole beef ribs here. Yeah. 
And, and let's be honest, this time you wasn't that hungry. I had the middle section which was the biggest and I It's the it. biggest. There's only one problem. What? The construction crew is still here and they expect... Or is, is it enough for them? No, no, no. We cannot give them this. But you say it, it failed. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, then leave us a big thumbs up. A big thank you to our patrons and the YouTube members. Hope to see you guys next time. Until then. Be smakelijk. And keep on smoking beef ribs. Classic style. That's right. Exactly like this. Keep on smoking this. Exactly. Mm -hmm.